welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm so happy to see you all here. So in today's video, I want to talk about how to download sequencing data from SRA and CBI. This is going to be a fairly simple and short video where I want to talk about what is SRA and briefly talk about its entities. Next, I want to demonstrate how to download and configure SRA toolkit. And lastly, I want to demonstrate how to download the sequencing rates. An SRA record uh, will have a lot of information uh, with multiple entities uh, containing different types of information. So we can find information about the project, uh, which is equivalent to study, where we have description of the research project. And they have accessions starting with SRP. We also can find information about the samples which are extracted or which are under the study from each of these individual projects. And they also describe a bit about these samples and what organisms they are coming from. And these uh, information and these records uh, start with accession starting with uh, SRS. Um, we can also find information about experiment, which details information about the sequencer and uh, details about the library preparation. And these records start with accession SRX. And lastly, we have runs, uh, which, uh, which start with accession SRR. And these are actually associated with the uh, raw files or the sequencing files. And today we are going to be uh, retrieving the sequencing data using the SRR IDs. And I will demonstrate how do we get to the point where we find the SRR IDs associated with the samples that we are interested to get the raw data of. Uh, so in my requirements today, uh, I'm just going to be using SRA toolkit. So I will start with uh, demonstrating how to download the SRA toolkit first, configure it. And then we can switch screens to the terminal where I can show you uh, how to actually retrieve the data from the NCBI servers into our local computers. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. So today uh, I want to download uh, the sequencing data, uh, the RNA sequencing data to be specific associated with the samples uh, that are part of the uh, breast cancer tumor data set. And this data set uh, is the, the same one that I have been using in my past couple of videos uh, to demonstrate uh, how to manipulate the data or how to visualize this data in R. And if you're not familiar or haven't been following through uh, the videos, then I can add the link to the data set in the description below. So let's start by going to NCBI GEO. And this is the same place where we started to retrieve our um, gene expression data. So the gene accession ID that, uh, so the GSC ID that I will be using is uh, 183947. Uh, this is the same um, uh, data set, the breast cancer data set containing 30 pairs of tumor normal samples. Um, and the data was normalized as FPKM. This is the same data set that we used in our previous couple of videos. So today I will actually uh, scroll down and click on SRA run selector because today I want to retrieve the sequencing data and not the uh, gene expression data. So I'll click on SRA run selector. And when you do that, you will see this page shows up which contains information about the project and it gives you information about the runs and the bytes and additional information and gives you option to download and when you scroll further down you'll be able to see the entire table uh, which has uh, SRR IDs associated with the samples it contains information about the sample the donors and the associated uh, experiment IDs the starting from SRX and it has additional information as well and we see 60 runs here because if you remember, we have 30 pairs of tumor and normal samples and each sample would is, correspond, is corresponding to one run. So we see 60 runs. So technically each run will have sequencing data associated with that sample. So if you want to download sequencing data associated with all the samples uh, in this cohort, you can click on the accession list button here under the download section and it will open up a dialog box uh, allowing you to save the text file containing all the SRR IDs uh, into your local system. Uh, so let me download that and show you how that looks. So once you have finished downloading, uh, you'll be able to see that you have a text file 
uh, which has uh, all the SRR IDs that's associated uh, to your uh, samples uh, to the samples in your cohort. Uh, so we will be using these SRR IDs uh, to fetch the data, um, uh, to fetch the sequencing data that's associated with this ID and cor that corresponds to a sample in your cohort. Uh, so before uh, we do that, we will require SRA toolkit uh, in order to use these SRR IDs to get the data. So this is the GitHub page for SRA toolkit and I will add the link to this GitHub page in the description below. So this is where you will be able to download the SRA toolkit and depending on the system that you're using, you will have to uh, download and configure uh, the binaries or scripts uh, as per your system. So since I'm using Mac OS, uh, I'll be downloading uh, this, uh, the file that's associated with uh, this system. So once you click on it, it will open a dialog box. It will allow you to save uh, the file uh, uh, in your system and then you can follow the uh, steps to install and configure it. Uh, I will be demonstrating for Mac today because I'm using Mac, uh, but they have pro provided uh, uh, guides to installing these, um, these, this tool in uh, different uh, systems like Windows or Linux. Um, so let's go ahead and download this, um, uh, this tool. I finished downloading uh, the SRA toolkit and it gets downloaded as a .tar.gz compressed file. So before I go ahead and uncompress this, I quickly want to create an empty directory here uh, in order for me to use the SRA toolkit uh, to retrieve the sequencing um, uh, sequencing files. And this will make sense why once we uh, go on to configure the SRA toolkit. So let's um, uncompress the SRA toolkit file now. And it will uncompress the file contents in the same directory. It seems it has finished uncompressing. So let's just take a look at uh, the folder contents and we see that we see another folder with the same name being created. So let's uh, take a look at what are the folder contents and we see that there are multiple files and folders within this folder. So the next step is to configure it now that we have successfully downloaded and uh, uncompressed this uh, file. So usually the executables are always present in the bin and we will require one of the executable uh, to configure uh, this uh, tool or this package. So let's go to bin and now let's configure with vdbconfig hyphen i and run this. Once you run it, it should open a blue interactive terminal and here we need to change uh, a few things before we can start using the SRA toolkit. So to access various tabs and options, you can click on the tab button and it will move a red block to each of these tabs. And the first thing I want to make sure that in my main tab, I have my enable remote access selected. So I'm not going to change anything in this tab and I'm going to move on to the next tab that is the cache uh, and I'm going to select it. And I want to make sure that my enable local file caching is selected. Uh, but I want to change the location of the user repository. So let's go ahead and click here and go to the location of your working directory. And remember, we created a temp folder here, uh, and this is an empty folder. So um, the this uh, particular option requires you to give the location to a directory which is empty. So we created an empty directory in our working uh, directory. So let's select this directory uh, as our uh, preferred location. And once I have that, I will click on OK. And yes, I want to change the location. Now I see that my um, location has been changed and I do not wish to change any other um, uh, any other options or parameters here. So I'm just going to exit from here and I want to save the changes. So once you do that, you will be now you will now be able to use your SRA toolkit. 
now that we have configured our SRA toolkit, now let's start downloading sequencing files. So I will use a function called faster dump and this executable or this function is present in the bin folder in our SRA uh, toolkit folder. So let me just show you that I'm in the project, my project working directory. So I'll go into the SRA toolkit folder that we uncompressed, go into the bin and we get the function faster queue dump and I will split files and provide the SRR IDs. So I will just copy paste from the list of the accessions or the list of the SRR IDs that we originally download. I'm just choosing to download uh, sequencing data associated with one SRR ID. Uh, there is a way to download the uh, uh, data associated with all the SRRs. Uh, it'll just have to be some different parameter here and you can provide the name of the file containing all your SRR IDs. But here for the sake of the demonstration and the time constraint, I'm just going to download the sequencing data associated with this SRR ID. I'm just going to run this. We can see that uh, it has finished uh, downloading uh, the sequencing reads associated with the SRR ID. And when we check the contents of our folder, we can see two files being generated ending in dot fast queue. Uh, there are two files because these are paired end reads and hence we have two, fa two fast queue files or two uh, sequencing, two files containing sequencing reads uh, associated with this SRR ID. Uh, so that's how we use the SRA toolkit to download um, the sequencing data uh, that's available uh, on the NCBI into our local system. So that's all I had for today's video. Uh, it was fairly quick and short tutorial on how to download the sequencing data from SRA NCBI. I will add the link to the GitHub page to SRA toolkit in the description below and also the link to the data set that we used today. I will also be adding links, uh, additional links uh, that I think will be helpful in understanding some of the things that we discussed today. If you found this video helpful and informative, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.